Hey, buddies, Potatomic Whiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization. Sorry, Europa Universalis 4. God, it's such a bad habit that I do that. Um, but welcome back to uh, Let's Play Europa Universalis 4. Um, we are working away on some stuff. Brain, realign. <laughs> Come on. Um, I was, I was considering, I was considering getting my colonial nation to declare a um, colonial war, right? And I, I, I kind of ran a little bit ahead, and I, I, I tested it out, and it seemed to go okay. But I'm worried about this whole league war potentially kicking off, and I might try to get out of the league. Oh, I'm out. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm out. Great. Um, so I'm out. Withdraw from public life or see him acquitted. I think I'm going to see him acquitted here. I think I'm happy to pay that price for the little bit of corruption because I do have natural drain happening thanks to my positive stability and my ahead of time stuff. Now, we have a lot of loans to repay, and that is something I'm definitely prioritizing, because we have so many loans. Enhanced reputation. Very good. Um, now, we're making a fair bit of trade, but I was wondering, would it be worth my while to maybe strip off a few of these light ships and do a bit of piracy? Um, I think it could be worth it if I just pulled out a few ships and stuck them in here for piracy reasons. Um, I could maybe make some good money here because there already are some pirates here. And the piracy efficiency is pretty good thanks to Great Britain. Hmm. The efficiency is really good. It's really a question of what I'm losing. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 10 ships. Right, right now we're making... Let's, let's let the year tick over. Okay, right now we're making about 18.81 ducats, okay? Um, so I'm going to take 10 of these ships. Let's get you guys to stop here. Is there... Shift click? No, there's no, like, easy way to take, like, 10 ships. Okay, we're going to take 10 ships. We're going to assign this a naval leader. Uh, he didn't get any... Um, thingy, but we're going to privateer in the English Channel. Okay. And then we're going to get these to protect trade here. And we'll kind of see if it's worth more for me to do it this way. So we'll just have a quick look. 18.81. 18.12. Alright. And we're also getting an additional 2.0. Yeah, so this is definitely worth our while. So, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some more of these ships. See if I can split them off into uh, privateering in Lubeck as well. Because there is a similar amount of wealth to be gained in Lubeck. Now, it's a little bit less efficient, but I should be able to make uh, make some money from it. So, let's go ahead and hunt. Oh, sorry, not hunt pirates. I want to uh, privateer in Lubeck. And then... I'll take this other stack of ships and I'll send them back to protect trade on the North Sea. And we'll kind of see how that pans out for us next month with spoils of war and the... Um... So we lost about a whole ducat, but we gained about a whole ducat. So that looks like it was a good trade for us. Uh, and we've still got a bunch of ships on their way. Get these guys linked up. I think I'm going to mothball these to save some money on my fleet maintenance. I could make some states over here. I don't think I will. Somebody wants to buy Condottiori. Actually, something that happened was the person I was fabricating claims on died. Like their whole <laughs> their whole empire just got completely eaten up. So I'm building a spy network over here now. Um, you just buy a mixed tech. And I think we had agreed that we would keep this guy um, to try to build up a big ball of military points. And I also need to start getting some of these other points too. Now, I do have some policies enacted. Um, 
which I'm still pretty happy about keeping them going. But I might go up to a higher speed here, have a look at our force limit. I could get five more troops. I think that would be a reasonable thing to do, but I'm going to, again, prioritize this cash. Um, repaying this, because getting getting these, in, these uh, interest payments down is really, really important. So Olancho has risen up, that's fine. This will be a colonial nation soon, which will be very exciting. Spanish Texas. Okay. I don't want to sell my army for anything there. Stability cross modifier. Now we must be very, very close to embracing this. Yeah. In fact, it's probably going to naturally just become a thing. So we before we even get to... Um, to getting a new tech, this will just automatically become a part. So there's Miami, it is fully integrated. Let's go ahead and send here. We're going to want to be pulling more and more trade power. To here, I've got about 43% of the power here, so I want to get these up to similar-ish numbers. About 17 here. Let's see, where am I getting all my trade power from? So I'm getting a decent amount from my um, quote-unquote vassals, which is good. I'm pulling a fair amount of that trade power forward. In fact, I think I'm pulling like the majority of this, although some of it is going to uh, Sevilla. That's because Spain actually somehow has a bunch of power here. How is that? They have a 47% trade modifier, and they're getting a lot of trade power from Hispaniola. Huh. Why is their modifier so high? Maximize profit. Competitive merchants. I guess they must have trade ideas. My merchants have been slandered. There's also the aristocrats. And I'm also embargoed. I think I'm going to embargo... Um, whoa, okay. You're now making naval supplies. Okay, commerce comes first. Or... This. I think... I'd like the trade efficiency guy, if I could get him. Now, he's only five per month to maintain. I think that's worth it to get plus three dip, uh, Diplo here. Um, because I'm going to use that Diplo to develop my provinces is the main goal of it. I can embrace this, but again, it's going to appear naturally in these provinces. So I'll just let it do that. Now, the printing press is starting to spread pretty well, um, but I think I have a big leg up because of my how highly developed my provinces are. I do have loans coming up. I will be repaying as many of them as I can. We're down to seven loans. Honduras. No, I don't want to make any states. Okay. I like things tick along. More and more ships are appearing. I will lose the prestige. I have a, have a glut of prestige. So we had to renew loans, which sucks, but it is what it is. We can deal with that. That's okay. We can embrace this now. Let's have a look. So this should be very cheap to embrace. Yeah, 58. Boom. So that'll make our tech costs a lot cheaper here. Once we get up to the next thing, I'm going to try to spend as many points into the um, military idea group as fast as possible. Um, and I'm probably going to focus on military because I want to get quantity finished. And there was a bit of a debate about which of these I should go for, but I think quantity is going to give me what I need most, which is a really big um, cost-efficient army. Quality has some... Like, offensive is really, really good. But I feel like I feel like quantity is just has so much good stuff. Like let's let's talk about it. A huge manpower pool. Okay, great. And it makes your manpower recover faster. So just endless manpower. And we have a decent amount, but this would be a huge bu buff to our manpower. Then we'd also get really cheap units. Um our, our units would be cheaper and cost less to maintain. So this is gonna save us a bunch of money that we can invest into buildings, and our army is bigger and scarier. Then we just get more mercenaries and you know bigger garrisons. These aren't these are kind of weak. 
But then we get the land attrition, that's pretty good, another sort of manpower save. And then the big one is getting a 50% modifier to our force limit. Now considering we're getting a lot of flat force limit from our vassals, and a decent amount from our provinces, this would let us jump up our army to be much scarier and we'd be much, much less likely to get war declared on us, but also it's going to mean that we can maintain higher tariffs with all of our vassals and colonial nations because their relative power to me is going to be a lot smaller. So I'm hoping that will, uh, that will do the trick. Trade protection castles belly. Let's revoke this and go ahead and issue embargo. Okay, we're now embargoing them. Now we should see they, because they're embargoed by me. See, how do I, can I make my vassals embargo my allies? This will cost me five liberty to desire, but I think it's worth it because it'll hurt them. Um, a New Ireland as well. This will hurt their income a decent amount. I check this out. No, actually, it ended up being better. So yeah, I want to embargo here. And this actually cut Spain's um, income here significantly. They're still pulling a lot here. Mainly because Portugal has a presence here somehow. But yeah, it, it, it put me much, much more relatively... Uh, it, it made me relatively stronger. To them. I like that me and Irish Cuba have such a similar color that it's hard to tell us apart. But yeah, now, I, now I'm feeling much stronger about this. Interestingly, I'm not getting any transfers from downstream, but that's fine. So I'd like to start getting a colony. I'd like to start expanding into these Mexican provinces, and I'd like to also start maybe expanding into the Horn of Africa, because controlling this um, Ivory Coast node um, I could send a lot of stuff to the English. Oh, I can only send it to the English Channel. But what I could send it to is the Caribbean. If I could send it to the Caribbean, then it would kind of filter up to me um, in a roundabout way. But all of the trade nodes to here kind of feed this way. So I think that could be really, really powerful if I were to somehow just get a little bit of this. In fact, the Gold Coast would be the ideal spot. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab, like, I'm going to demothball this fleet and grab, like, six infantry. Um, and send them on their merry way down to Africa to take the Gold Coast. Money is money. Let's see. Local manpower. I think I'd like to... I don't mind losing the prestige again for the local efficiency of production. We're going to set these guys to be drilling. Although I actually wanted you to be stepping back one tile. So there's five infantry. Now, unfortunately, we did have to take out more loans. I'm going to get another... That's a five that I can get. We're going to attach you to these transports. Once they're repaired, we'll send you down to the Gold Coast. And we'll start trying to get a colony down here. Maybe start trying to conquer some of this African area. Um, and see if we can get a trade company that is going to um, transfer to the Caribbean. Because not only that, it'll also let me pull trade here from Brazil. And Portugal is pulling that forward, I think. Or they will at least. And additionally, England and, and, and stuff. I think I saw some English colonies down here. Well, I might be crazy. No, here's a French one. Oh, I kind of wish I'd picked that up. Damn. There's probably this island, these islands have been taken, yeah? Damn, these islands are really nice for being able to reach around the world um, with your naval range because they are always like little things. Ooh, I could go for this. Fernando Po is another good one. Um, but I'm probably just going to focus on getting some of Africa. Okay. This is a transfer of knowledge. Okay, you are now ready to go. Let's get you down here to the Gold Coast because I'll be able to send this guy here soon. There's Irish Mexico. 
Let's go to the Gold Coast. Then if we check out Irish Mexico, very nice. We're going to start saying exactly where I want you to expand. Irish Mexico has these desires. I have desires on pretty much all of this. So let me see if I can get myself to um, maybe encourage my thingy, my, my uh, colonial nation that they'll expand out to here. I'm going to maybe try to take like two provinces at a time and, and not expand too quickly in here because I am going to be forcing my, my colony to take care of it and, you know, they're going to struggle with that a little bit. Not a trade company and owner has embraced feudalism. Nearby friendly provinces embrace feudalism. Very nice. Native uprising. Okay, now we do want to keep track of this boat. Because they are going deep into the uh, waters of the world. Let me have a look. Is Scotland my ally? Scotland is my ally. So let me see, who would I be at war with? Essa, Provence, Wurzburg, Brandenburg, Bohemia, Salzburg, Anspagis, Frisia, Milan, Genoa, Ragusa, the Knights, Spain, Hispaniola, New Spain. Oh, I don't want to deal with all this. This is too much. This is like a global war that they're getting started here. And they don't have enough allies. I'm happy to lose the prestige. I'm good. Thank you very much. Appreciate the uh, invite. But no, thank you. We're going to repay these loans. We're going to extend these loans. Okay, you guys now need to get back to the main port. We'll build more trade ships. What I want to do is I want to get rid of some of this debt. Because it is eating into my, my cash flow. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, I don't really care about this prestige, so I guess I'll take the caravel and send it to protect trade in the North Sea. I, I, again, I know it's it's a there's a diminishing return to sending more and more trade ships to the same node, but I want to make sure I'm gathering as much of the wealth in here as possible. Um, because A, it prevents other people from getting it, and B, it gets me more money. I don't mind doing a little bit of spoils of war. There's a hundred pop in use, Daga. So now I have a 5,000 stack down here defending this colony. Getting 120 a year. And we will be uh, looking to maybe see if we can take little bites out of some of these guys. Maybe get some protectorates. Let's see. Did they change how protectorates work? I for, kind of forget. I, I, I Maybe I need to be bordering them or something. I'm not sure how protectorates work anymore. But I know it's a, I know there, oh God, it's been a while since I've played EU4 properly. I used to be, I used to be pretty knowledgeable about the game. And I used to have like, I wouldn't say I was like on the level of someone like a Rumba, but I would have been decent enough to hold my own in a game. Um, but now my knowledge is just <clears throat> totally forget. Okay, so Olancho became self-sustaining. And it is producing coffee, which is okay. Let's go get Pil Pil Pipu. So I want to keep strengthening Irish Mexico. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to want to be a very strong nation to try to break into um, all these gold provinces. And I'm kind of glad I got these two provinces because it kind of forces Spain to expand up this way, um, which gives me a chance to kind of take control of all this gold in here for myself. 
Um, let's see if I can't do that. So Elantra became self-sustaining and we're continuing to drop more of those. And Burke. So we're going to keep this guy again. And I think what we're going to do is... Oh, we're slightly over the force limit, but that's okay. We're going to import potatoes. And then I'm going to go in here, change all the edicts to development cost. Okay. We have all the development cost edicts. These are... I, I like leaving these on. I don't care that I'm losing, like, a little bit of money. It's probably, like, super inefficient. But, I, I like, otherwise I'll just forget to use them. And I value the um, admin... I, I value the monarch points more than I do the... What you call them? So, local production, production efficiency. So, in Tuadaman, I'm going to boost the manpower, then the production, and then we'll see who's most efficient. In here, okay, production efficiency. I just want to make sure I'm getting the best value for this. Let's do a little bit of manpower, and then there. Connacht now. Okay, I don't have these Diplo points now. Now I want to grab these um, with the efficient tax provinces. Okay, now I want to grab more manpower. Very nice. So that should have boosted our development quite a bit. We're up to 341, which is nice. Um, that's doing a good job for us. Like, You should see our income jump significantly here on the next month overtake. Yeah, look at that. Almost four gold. Very, very, very nice. We should actually be able to build a hell of a lot of buildings. Um, if we actually look at the development mode... You can see my country is starting to become a very nice bright orange color, contrasting to a lot of the reds. So once I'm starting to get to this kind of color, you know that my my development is starting to get very high. Like we're up to 20, like on average 20 development in most of my provinces, which is pretty crazy. I'm half tempted to do some development here in Kildara because it looks like it got neglected. So I'll do a click of each in it. And now it's up to 20, so I can build another building if I want. Which is exactly what I wanted. Um, if I go to the building. I guess I'll come quickly pop over here. Okay, so we got another colony here. Let's send another colonist to keep expanding New Ireland. We've got three colonists working on Eastern America, but I think that's a worthwhile thing because Eastern America feeds Canada. Um, and I want to make sure I'm feeding just as much money towards myself as I can. And plus, I want those extra traders. Looks like we had a little bit of a tiff with the local natives. Let's have a look at the loans. Let's repay a loan here. And I'm making 20 ducats a month. Oh, look at that trade income. That's beautiful. This is why I want to reserve the majority of this here. What I am going to do is... I have a decent amount of trade power here. So I think it's worth it to deny my enemies some of my trade um, value by running the local trade power thing. Protect trade. Protect trade. So if we see now, our trade income should jump slightly. Is that about an extra ducat. So that's an extra ducat that the enemy isn't getting. Now it's probably costing me more than a ducat to run these. My capital state, not quite, but over here, for example, yeah, probably about a ducat. So it's going to cost me, it, like I'm basically, I'm saying, I'm spending a little bit of money to mainly deny my enemy's money. Uh, let's see. 60% chance to increase um, the prosperity in here. Nice, that's actually really good. 
Having high prosperity is good for development. I'd like to get more of that prosperity stuff going. Okay, nice. Things are going really well. All right, let's have a look here. Irish Cuba. I think I don't want them to be uh I don't want to be them I don't want them to be disloyal so I think I'll take the lord um thingies and then I might just spend because otherwise I have to spend money to decrease tariffs although decreasing tariffs is kind of cheaper than increasing them so I guess I could have decreased them it's fine I'm, I'm okay with losing like a ducat to keep them loyal and not have to deal with disloyal We've ended our truce here. Okay, humiliate, humiliate rival. I would like to maybe humiliate a rival, but right now we have uh, plenty of power production because we're sending privateers. That's the other advantage of sending privateers. Uh, I will lose population in Calusa. It's not a big deal. I don't really want to spend my diplo points because the timing on these techs is pretty important. Um, so I kind of need to hold on to all my points for a little while. Now, I know I meant to save up my stuff to invest in an idea, but I felt like the manpower, and in particular the force limit that we got from doing all that development, we got another four army force limit, and another decent amount of naval force limit that we're going to start taking advantage of soon, hopefully. We're down to four loans, which is pretty good. I want to be debt-free, hopefully, before uh, 1570, and then we can start rebuilding our navy up to a reasonable level. I think I'm also going to expand the navy over here a little bit, We could gain inventiveness or Republican tradition. I could lose prestige. Prestige doesn't really have a huge amount of value for me. But innovativeness, um, you know, that power cost is really, really nice. And it it, it, it it pays itself off pretty pretty well throughout the game. And I feel like just getting more of that is really, really good. I would lose some prestige, but I'm okay with that. Okay, they got Doomsday over there. That's fine. I need to I need to get a war going with these guys before So I think what I want to do is fabricate a claim on I want to fabricate a claim on these guys on let me see is there a gold mine nearby No Fabricate on this. I'm going to build a spy network here. Mixtech has some vassals. Um, but I'm going to prioritize seeing if I can get these guys. If I, if I colonize there. Gold Coast Colony is developing well. That's good. Naval Supplies. Got another colony up here. Let's have a look at the... Yep, we're going to get the final Caribbean trade province. So that's going to let me boost a little bit more. New Ireland has a little bit of an army. That's good. That's exactly what we want to see. We want to get them linked up, ideally, um, across this entire coastline. Let's see what we can do there. All right, let's uh, let's keep going. Oh, looks like one of my colonies just gave me another merchant, so that's going to give me even more trade power in my capital node. Um, let's see, I'm up to a hundred percent. So I think Ivory Coast would be a reasonable place to stick them. Now that I actually have trade power here, unable to send merchant. Oh, it's out of trade range until I have this province fully done. Well, I guess we'll just wait for that then. Because transferring from here to Caribbean would be really, really, really nice. Plus, I think that actually gives it a chance to get more price increases as the flow goes, you know? The trade value multiplier from being sent on by a merchant. Okay. So we have a couple of years to pay off these loans. Stability cost. 
Okay, that's good. I'm going to keep this guy around as long as I can. I want to get as many points out of him. He's up to a 336. Um, we're now producing fur in Andrus Goggin. Okay. Gold Coast. Oh my god, that's coming along really well, actually. I'm very surprised by how quickly the Gold Coast came online. So Calusa has become self-sustaining. That's not unexpected. I think that kind of lets me send another um, army to here. And then just use two um, colonists to fill out colonial East America. And start building up colonial Mexico a bit. I think I would like to also send another colonist up to colonial Canada because I feel like this needs to be built out a little bit. I need to start snatching up all these bits of land and there's some nice um, trade estuaries and stuff like that up in these trade zones and which is I think it'd just be a good move if I filled out colonial Canada because this is one of my stronger great um, colonial nations and they're going to provide me with a lot throughout the game if I can expand them. So that'll be the use of another thing. Now, the argument... There is another argument in favor of quality, I think, because you can get another colonist, I think, somewhere. Let me see. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? There is a way to get another colonist with these ideas. I could have sworn with a thing. I guess I'm wrong. Quantity would give me global settler increase. Exploration and quantity would give me land mod manpower and leader maneuver. Innovative would give me infantry com. No, that would be thing. Where's quality? But quantity, rather. I guess there is no innovativeness and quantity. Well, I guess going quality here. Damn, that's hard to say no to because infantry compatibility plus 20% is really good. Damn. 20% compatibility is a lot. Um, That would bring me up to a 30%. Infantry combat ability. I just, I have a hard time turning down these force limits though. And the cheaper, more efficient army gold cost. Because I think, really I am kind of limited by manpower and army size right now. And I just need to have bigger armies to be able to fill out um, the combat with. Because I, I just need to fill out combat with. Whereas I think quality shines when you've small combat. Uh, when you can already fill them out. Whereas I'm having trouble filling out my, my full combat with against these bigger nations. Pill Pill's producing sugar. That's not a terrible one. Decent price. Why are you only 110 a year tropical? I guess that kind of makes sense. I'm surprised though because I think this one was like 120 a year. Oh, it's only 105 now. Alright. <clears throat> Andres Goggin. Cool, 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 cool. Trade League disbanded. All right, Ragusa dropped the Trade League. Let's have a little bit of a look around the world. I guess we've kind of revealed a bit more. So we can see the Ottomans are doing Ottoman things. They haven't managed to really do anything to Hungary, although they have mostly chewed up the Balkans. And it looks like they're continuing to do that sort of stuff. Yeah, Venice. I'm surprised Venice is still alive. They have cores all over the place. Um, Poland and Lithuania are doing good jobs. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't take part in this goddamn war. Are you winning? Hold on. Scotland's winning? What? Hold on. Isn't there a button here for seeing wars? I swear there's a button for seeing current wars. Current wars. Attacker. 
War of the Protestant League. Holy crap. They are winning. Of course, I'd have to deal with all these Spanish things. Although now might be a good time to declare war in Hispaniola because they're already at war. Um, I could get my little colonial nation to beat up New Spain as well. Have you been fabricating on them? Good job. You're doing great. Oh, I can attack Giu. Would you give me access? You might. Now, these guys are big, but they're military, military level 9. So I'd probably be able to grab a couple of these provinces for my vassal and help them hold on to them. And these are high value provinces. Like, these are gems. Look at that. Yeah, I'm tempted. I'm tempted by it. Let's do it. I don't think they have any allies. Yeah, they don't. Third fleet using the transport. Nice. You are off automatic transport. That's for the other fleet. Cool. Religious civil disorder. Domestic trade power, damn. That's a two-year negative malice here. That's going to hurt us a bit in our trade income. Hmm. Alliances being forced to break. Now, loans. Okay, we have two more loans and we should be able to get them out of the way. We are trading in fur, that's good. Let's go ahead and repay multiple loans. It isn't Gold Coast, lose ferocity. Okay, so we are going to be able to get these tech ups next year. Um, now the Gallius is a better galley, so I don't really care about that. The trade station, however, is pretty good. There's also promoting cultures. Now I don't think I have really cultures to worry about. Yeah, it's like Highlander is my accepted group. Um, but I don't need to worry about that until I start trying to take on England. Now I don't think England really went for exploration ideas, did you? You did, but they haven't really been doing much with it. Like, they've kind of faffed about in Venezuela. They're doing stuff here. Um, I thought they had some stuff down here, but I guess Portugal might have taken it from them. Yeah, England hasn't really been doing much with their exploration. I think, think the fact that I exist has been causing them problems and hurting them. Or I, but I should stop saying England because they're Great Britain now. But I think the fact that Ireland is independent and doing bad stuff to them is causing them major problems, which is good because it's hurting them and I want them to hurt. Okay, let's, um... We've got one more loan to repay. And... Hopefully I will have all the income I need. Let's go ahead and keep this same guy. Ah, damn it, we renewed that loan. That sucks. Trace with Scotland ended. We can get tech. I'm not worried about that right now. I want to get it next year when it's cheap. I mean, I guess if I was getting innovativeness, I would consider it. Gold Coast became self-sustaining. I'm not going to pick up innovativeness. Yeah, so I won't bother. So this is fetishist. So trade company. So unrest. Wait, why is the culture wrong? Hmm. I guess they must have changed how this works. I don't want to do any development here.
This would hurt it, but I do want to convert it. First, before I assign it to the trade company, so that was a little bit of a mistake there, my bad. There is, of course, the negative trade goods produced, which sucks, but it'll be fine. What I can do now, however, is I can finally use this merchant and, assi and assign him to the Ivory Coast and get it steering towards the Caribbean. Because I feel like a lot of this power is going the wrong way now, and Hispaniola is actually doing that. So we're going to transfer trade power here. Get over there, it'll take you 45 days. Conquistador has left us, we'll sort it out in a moment. Uh, nope, we won't withdraw from public life. Then... We want to transfer to the Caribbean. How much of that is, are we pulling? We're pulling a little bit of that. Just a, just a smidge of that money towards the Caribbean. Um, it's hard to see who's doing this. How much money am I, how much money am I pulling out here? Can I see? So I'm pulling out about half a ducat to the Caribbean. But that's that's half a ducat that isn't going into someone else's pockets. Oh shit, I forgot to assign my um forgot to assign my uh, colonist. I want to keep spreading here. But these guys, I'm going to want to fabricate on them. I kind of wish I had more diplomats. I think I'm going to take you off. No, you don't have any allies, do. You are allied with Zazu, who I can't even see. Oh no, here they are. Zazu are military level 11, so I think it's that's a pretty good opportunity, considering I'm 13, about to be 14. It's a pretty good opportunity to hit them. Hit them where it hurts, so I'm kind of tempted to get some more inventory here. Once you land, I'll start producing infantry from this pile. It'll take a while to build, but I don't plan on going to war for a while, so that's fine. So I'm going to make five infantry here. And maybe just a value cannon for each stack, for each five stack. I'll take a while to build in there, but that'll be fine. So soon we can invest in the next tech. Okay, let's go with scientific experimentation. This. Now I did use up all my military points because I kind of forgot, but it's not the end of the world. So there is some stuff we want to take care of here. We have a new type of unit, the Latin Caracol Infantry. We also have a new idea group. And I think I really should take a military idea group here at this point in time. Diplomatic would be really amazing for me so I could start fabricating. But I think I just need the, um, the sheer power from quantity. I'm going to focus on military uh, points here for a while so that I can just mass them up and get them going. Let's spy network, okay. Okay, who am I building a spy network with? Building a spy network on the Aztecs. Yeah, do you have any allies? You still do not, that's really great. So what I'm actually going to do is bring this guy back so that I can uh, properly deal with the Aztecs first because they actually have gold tiles. I can get those two, give them to my nation. They'll start producing a lovely amount of gold for me. Depletion of the European beaver. This means fur has in price, increased in price. That's really good for me because I have a lot of fur. I have a lot of fur in my empire. Um, so fur going up in price, really, really nice. If we check out over here, that should actually have impacted my trade income significantly. Yeah, like a decent little boost there. So the fact that this went up a decent amount, very nice. Now you can see there it's up to uh, 3.5. Let's get this loan repaid. Whoa! Andrew Scoggin became self-sustaining. Catholic Zealots. You should be able to deal with that, right? Which 
trying to get the Protestant East Coast. I think that'll turn out well for me. Oh. Looks like Scotland enforced. Oh, it looks like everyone is switching sides here. I should have, I should have stayed in this war. God damn. Um, so let's repay that loan. Okay, now we're clear of our loans. And what we're going to want to start doing is building up our naval force limit. So pretty much all of my money is going to go into that. It's just getting a really, really big and nasty navy. I'm also going to build up a heavy ship fleet. Probably once I've fill, filled out my trade ship fleet. Yeah, that's pretty normal to have these rise up. I do like that I do get a little bit of tr uh, army tradition from having these colony little fights. It's quite nice. I think it helps keep it a little bit higher. My army tradition is pretty terrible, but I haven't really been focusing on keeping it high because I've been trying to stay out of wars. So, it's getting to the point now where markets would actually provide a decent amount of trade power in some of these cities. Not sure if it would be worth it. It would also make it a lot cheaper to run these policies if I had these cards like to the point where it's like you know getting reasonable uh, in terms of production no nope. taxation no nope. trade no um, I would like more shipyards but right now I just actually need to build navy getting barracks would be nice because I could get so much manpower from these I'd be really happy if I could pull that off um, I also need to upgrade my bastion here to get that up. I think that's part of why my army tradition is so weak, is that I don't have enough fully maintained forts. So that's going to have to be something I... Eventually I'll take care of that, but right now my priorities are on increasing my income, and then I'll start, like, really building up. So, local goods modifier. I think I'll take the admin power. I like the admin power. You've chosen wisely. Catholic fate reformer. Okay. He converted. So I could probably cancel. Oh no, no. That just made them go quicker, right? Yeah. Now, it would cost me 11 to get a level 3 advisor. I think I'm just going to go for uh, global tariffs here. Because that'll result in a bit of extra cash for me. Feeling pretty good about my relative power to subjects. They are starting to build up a little bit in their um, development and stuff like that. This guy's doing pretty well. He's stocking up the cash. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why you're just holding on to all your money. Are you saving up for a big war, perhaps? I mean, you have the autonomy to do that. Now might be a good time. They're loyal. How can I get there? Is there like spy? Ah, oh, agitate for liberty. So that can't be done until later in the game. But that's something I might look into doing is trying to liberate some of these guys and then conquer them with my colonial nations. Okay, so there's a new... Holy Roman Emperor. And Protestant is the official faith. Yes. That's great. This is Provence, of all places. Are you even in? Somehow you are in the Holy Roman Emperor. <laughs> um, there's no electors. So why am I at one minus 1,000? I'm not eligible to be emperor. Oh, right, because I'm a merchant republic. Never mind. <laughs> I forgot. I was like, huh, why, 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 why would they consider me? Is there something wrong with me? Yeah, I'm not the right government type. All right. Let's get these guys linked up. Um, I have like I have like these little armies all around the world. 
I guess you should link up with these guys. I guess there's no sense in you being here. Let's get the war with Mexico going. Uh, Ashanti Aztec. Call it Mexico, I meant Aztec. So we will declare here when this guy gets back. In the meantime, what I'm going to quickly do is grab... Don't I have an army? That was supposed to be Condottioring. Go do that. I kind of forgot about that. Whoops. Let's just build a bunch of ships for this. Get up to our force limit. Take a while, but you know. Once we get there, we'll be good. Right. So, allow me to declare this war. Policy change is in order. Philosopher died. And I think that was actually a really highly skilled philosopher that I'm a bit sad about getting, or losing rather. Um, production efficiency, I think, is pretty good here. I make a decent amount of money from that. Mostly trade, though. So now I can declare war. Sweden won't come, but that's fine. We're going to take Mexico. Two gold mines. I guess I should have maybe had a cannon here. We're going to go down to speed four while we're at war. Okay. So dissatisfied subject of the Aztecs are doing things. Cool. Let's see if we can chase down these eagle warriors. Jaguar warriors or whatever. So we are fortunate in that we have... Wow, he actually has amazing... Thing, but his, his military tactics are so awful, but his morale is great. So he's probably going to die real quick. Yeah, they're getting slaughtered, unfortunately for them. My guys just do way too much damage compared to them, thanks to the uh, tactics multiplier. Yeah, completely wiped him out. I don't know why you're being weird. Oh, right, I didn't let a day pass. <laughs> of course, that makes sense. Um, let's keep adding ships as the days go by. I think the cool thing here is that looting... Um, gold mines tend to have a lot of money in them, right? Am I wrong? I guess I could be wrong. PPL became self-sustaining. Let's go ahead and send to Lenka. And we'll get that started. Oh, we can adopt an idea. Let's take the manpower modifier. It's going to boost our manpower up into like the 50,000 mark. Yeah, 53,000. That's pretty good. Manpower recovery speed is going to be nice too. Making almost a regiment's worth of troops a month. Need to convert one more province to get this. We already had a golden age, unfortunately. The I think there's there's a there's a there's a reasonable argument to be made that I took the golden age too early. I think it's one of those things where yeah, it's stronger later, but you know you can get a real benefit from doing it early in the game. So let's keep expanding this. Really nice thing is that my naval tradition should be pretty high from all this trade protecting that I'm doing. Not as high as I was hoping. It's, it's okay, though. Cape Coast is making naval supplies. I don't have a colonist sitting around. No, no, no. I sent him. Sparring Casas Belly, Ashanti, Diplomatic Insult. That's fine. Now, I am fabricating on Ashanti. And I want those provinces. In particular, I really just want this one, but I might just take both. 
I don't want to fight this guy, but they are, like, this is the prime time to do it while I'm, like, extremely ahead in tech. Um... Would let me start pulling in trade from here as well, potentially. Which would be pulling more trade away from Spain. Which is exactly the sort of thing that I want to be doing. Morocco has started to expand. Wow, they're doing really well. So let's declare war on the Ashanti. Benin will answer the call. Who are this tiny little nation here. Okay, that's good. Zazu doesn't want anything to do with them. We should win these fights pretty handily. And send one cannon this way. We should be winning this, right? Yeah, we have a massive tactics advantage. Gain some innovativeness. Wait, did we really lose? He stack wiped me? How did he stack wipe me? My army is like way better. What? I must have rolled like really awfully. Ah, oh, my colony was damaged too while I was distracted. That's really unfortunate. So I don't know why I can't put this back in the trade province, but that's okay. Appalachia became self-sustaining trade. Casas Belli, Siege of Mexico. Okay, we can end this war. Let's take both of these for uh, Irish Mexico. Irish Mexico. Let's say, give me both of those. Who is this? The Aztecs? Oh, I need to finish this, so I'm going to have to hold on to that for a while before I can get this war cleaned up. So let's try to finish up the coast here. Oh man, these guys are like converting provinces like hell. Combine those together. Conquest of Mexico. No, that's not what I wanted. What the hell? My my fast my, my colonial nation pieced out. The jerk. I was gonna I'm trying to give you the stuff. <laughs> you were supposed to hold on to that land so I could give you it in peace. You fool. Hostile movement speed is fine. More and more ships. More and more ships. Yeah, we're getting this number up nice and high. I want to be at about 75%. If I'm holding 75%, I can start build this up into a uh, a node that can really compete with these two. I lost a great general. It's fine. Okay. Wow, he really got there faster than us? That's surprising as hell. We totally lost this war in Africa. All right. Let's see if we can't fix that. I had no idea the Africans were so dangerous. What the hell? <laughs> they like totally just wrecked my troops. They like stack wiped me. Um, trade power, production efficiency, trade power. Get the hell in there. You get the hell down here. Oh, it went away. Dude, I got stack wiped twice. By, uh... By primitives. That is embarrassing. <laughs> Holy crap.
Gomerez is now self-sustaining. We're going to keep him. Give me both of your provinces. Give me all of your stored gold. I can't gift you these provinces because I'm at war. Damn it. I have to core them. <sighs> eh, it's not a big deal. May as well convert Mexico while I'm at it. A little bit of overextension isn't the end of the world, although I think it really does hurt your trade income. Where is it? It's, uh... Trade power abroad, minus 24%. Pretty brutal. Where are my ships? God damn, this is surprising. I mean, it shouldn't be. But it is. That I got absolutely shrecked by these smaller nations. We'll be bringing over even more infantry, I think. One, two, three, four. One, two. I'll rebuild this up eventually. All right, we've got so much money. That's exactly where we want to be. Alright, so we're almost up towards our force limit. We're getting there. I will start expanding this battle fleet a little bit more as time comes. Okay, we actually have shock pips now, so we should be able to win this fight, I think. Our tactics, our tactics advantage alone should really be winning this for us. So we'll we'll desiege these. I guess we can take. I guess we can stack wipe these guys. Maybe lose military power or ducats. We can't afford to cut ties with these swine. I don't mind having the traders in power actually. Oh, did I not send a colonist over here? should have. I'm kind of fishing for that gold. If I go into this mode, it should tell me. Gold is at 5%. So I think it's... It's per, like, a region. As you go up here, the percentage chance for, like, gold changes and stuff. You're less likely to get grain. Like, grain can appear. Um, but it's, like, less common towards the middle and stuff like you see grain here is at 0.7% whereas gold is at 3.8 and gems at 8.4 so hopefully we'll pick up a little bit of extra gold for our co colonial nations though interestingly Nice. So let's keep going. Actually, I see that we've just about passed the hour mark. So I'm going to call that the end of this episode. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. Um, I think it's going pretty well. We have a little bit of problems, but you can see our empire is starting to meaningfully kind of, we've got like Ireland, we've got Greenland. We've got Canada, we've got sort of Eastern USA, we've started a Mexican, we have Cuba well established in the Caribbean. Um, now the only, the main, main places I need to get a hold of is I'm working on Mexico. I'm working on the Ivory Coast, which acts as like a gateway to the rest of the world. Um, need to keep expanding into America and stuff like that and maybe see if I could get a little bit of stuff going down here in, I'd like to get at least a Colombian and maybe a Peruvian one. Um, Peruvian thing because every colonial nation I can get gives me like a decent decent boost here like 
5 force limit is really, really nice. And the ability to get these. So, like, getting a, a large amount of colonial nations is actually a really good thing. And it's something I want to work on. Like, I could also get Louisiana and California. That's another one that I want to get my hands on. In fact, I might even start expanding up the coast here to get a little bit closer to California. Because there's at least two more colonial nations in here and four more down here for me. And then that's like plus 30 force limit, which is then getting multiplied by a bunch of other stuff. And then I can, once I have those colonial nations established, I can start thinking about um, trade company regions and maybe see if I can, at the very least, I would like to have a grasp on the, um, a grasp on this, the West African trade node. Because that would let me uh, steer all the trade to the Caribbean, which I have a pretty good strength in right now. Let's, uh, let's actually, before we end this episode, let's have a little bit of an investigation of the trade power going on here. So you can see the actual total trade power of this node is around 25 ducats, which is not too far off the English Channel, of course. Some of the trade is being pulled away, which is to be expected, but, you know. Oh wow, someone's pirating here. He is actually legitimately stealing some of my money. Wait, where are you? I'm here. Um, I think what I'll do... Is I might grab a few caravels and then anti-piracy here just to have a bit of, um... Just to penalize them for trying to do this. It's kind of annoying that protect trade doesn't do that. It's like... I guess it makes sense. Like, protecting trade is like making sure trade ships get through. Oh, isn't that what privateering is? Piracy, isn't it? I don't know. Listen. Sometimes the game doesn't make sense. Um, it doesn't make sense logically, but it makes sense mechanically. Okay, I'm going to call that... Holy crap, I'm yawning. I'm going to call that the end of the episode. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. I know these last couple episodes were a little bit slower than our other ones. Like, if you look at look at some of this, we went from 65 to 499. We went to 52. Whereas, like, the jump between um, 05 and 06, or, or episode 5 and 6 is about 5 years. And then the jump here is only, uh, like, 13 years. So I'm hoping to maybe, I, I kind of want to get more, because Dharma is out soon. And I, I sent Paradox an email to get uh, a press key for Dharma. So if Dharma comes out before we finish this series, or I get the key before we finish this series, um, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely switch over to the new patch. But I'm going to call that the end of this episode. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I probably already said this, but I'm tired as hell. I love you all very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.